I'm Dr. Forrest McFeeders, and I will be speaking today about Chapter 1, uh, Educational Technology, the Big Picture. This presentation will be a, an exploration of just the key concepts of Chapter 1. We won't go over everything, but um, we will focus on key concepts such as what has technology taught us, the rationale for using educational technology, and why use it at all, and when does educational technology work best. All right, if we take a look at slide two, the question is what history of educational technology has taught us? We look at bullet number one, technology is not a panacea or a quick fix. Um, there are no quick or easy universal solutions for technology. Um, what history has taught us is that the overuse of distance learning can create more problems than they solve. If we begin with the more realistic expectations in mind, we have more practical success and impact in teaching and learning. In other words, we begin with the question, what specific needs do my students have and that I have that any technology can meet? It's best not to overdo it. It's best not to get involved so much into the technology that you think you can just fix the situation. Second bullet, literacy offers limited rationale. And what that means is, Parents and educators want technology primarily because they feel that a technical skill will give a student um, technology, a technology, technological literacy required to prepare them for the workplace. But what we know through our research is that the technology must match the skill to the need. We must match the capabilities of the technology must be matched to the skills that display an obvious need for an application. So for instance, we don't need to go out and get a certain technology just because it's there. We need to get a technology that matches the needs, the specific needs of your student. Looking at our third bullet, what educational technology has also taught us is that teachers are not developers. They don't have time to do this. Teaching is one of the most time and labor intensive jobs in our society. And with so many demands on their time, most teachers cannot be expected to develop software or create complex technologically based teaching materials. So we have to ask ourselves, just because you can do a thing doesn't necessarily mean that you should do that thing. That's a good statement that instructional designers follow all the time. And that leads us to our next slide. If we look at the next bullet, we see that just because something is possible does not mean that it's desirable, feasible, or inevitable. We shouldn't just get something just because we think it can work. We shouldn't just put a technology in the classroom, and we can't emphasize this enough. We shouldn't just put a technology in the classroom just because it works or just because we feel that it will accomplish a certain task. It has to match a certain skill set or be aligned to objectives. Our next bullet, things change faster than teachers can keep up. Change is inevitable. Teachers must be willing to adapt. This places a special burden on already overworked teachers to continue learning new resources and changing their teaching methods. Gone are the days of thinking that you can just use your handouts and your homework over and over again. And the same reigns true for technology. As a teacher now, we have learned that you have to keep up, that you have to be willing to adapt. Older technologies can be useful. We have to be willing to not throw away something just because it's not the new thing. As much as we want to be able to adapt, we also have to be able to look at what we have and get the most out of the technology that we have at our disposal. And lastly, teachers will always be important. One of the most important things that the history of educational technology has taught us is that teachers will always have a place. Computers will not replace teachers because they're needed as facilitators of information. Good teachers are more essential now than ever. One reason is that whenever a new technology is introduced into society, there must be a counterbalance. There must be a, a technologically savvy teacher to interpret what that technology can do for our students and enhance the learning situation. Moving on to the next slide, the rationale for technology use. Let's look at the rationale, the reasoning behind using technology in the first place. Uh, one of the major rationales is motivation. Technology is a way of gaining students' attention, keeping students involved. We have to remember that we are in an age of students that have grown up entirely with technological tools. A reason for using technology is simply motivation, gaining the learner's attention. And along with motivation comes with support for manual operations in higher level learning. Remember, those higher level Bloom's taxonomy operations, technology can be used to support those higher order thinking skills. 
We use technology to illustrate real world experience and show relevance to engage students in productive work and definite connections with distance audiences. Technology can be used to enhance instructional methods with interaction and immediate feedback, visual demonstrations, self-paced learning, access to learning opportunities, and of course, again, cooperative learning, learning at a distance. Technology can be used to increase productivity, saving time on production tasks, grading and tracking student work, faster access, saving money on consumable materials. Technology can be used for technology literacy, information literacy, and visual literacy. So, why use technology? Technology can be used to influence the way students perform in the classroom. Again, developing that higher order thinking and problem solving. Computers and different softwares can encourage students to go beyond just comprehension and go into analyzing, evaluating, and synthesizing improving student motivation, as I mentioned before. Remember, we are living in the age of students that were born into technology all around them. When they see something that is familiar to them, it'll improve their motivation and get them more interested in doing something. Again, helping prepare students for the workforce and addressing needs of low-performing students and at-risk students and those that need assistive technologies. And our last key concept is when does technology work best? Studies show that it works best when it directly supports curriculum objectives being assessed. There must be an alignment between your objectives and your assessments. I will be coming back to that a lot in this course. We will be going over how objectives are aligned to technologies, instructional strategies, and your assessments. It also works best when it provides opportunities for student collaboration, and that's asynchronously in discussion boards and synchronously in chat rooms. It works best when it adjusts for the student's ability and prior experience, when you're able to adjust the software so that it can work with a variety of different skill levels. It works best when it's integrated into the typical instructional day and when it provides opportunities for students to design and implement projects that extend the curriculum content. In other words, having them to work beyond what's being assessed. And then lastly, it works best in environments where everyone supports it the students, the teachers, the school, the community, and they support it with money and access, like having computers at the library and grant funding for getting new computers. So in order to prepare you for your quiz, here are some practice questions that I'd like for you to review. Which of the following statements does not justify the use of technology in education? A, technology use can improve student motivation and attitude. B, technology use can address the needs of students with learning handicaps. C, Technology use can help prepare students for the workforce. And D, technology use can be a great reward for student behavior. What is the one thing we have learned from the history of technology in education about the role teachers play in the future? A, to be effective, schools must keep up with new technology-based methods. B, due to technological innovations, human teachers gradually will be phased out. C, despite technological innovations, human teachers will always be very important. Or D, the most successful teachers are the ones who integrate technology into their methods. True or false? One thing we have learned from the history of technologies in education is that teachers rarely have time to develop their own instructional media for teaching. And lastly, true or false? Studies show that technology works best when it directly supports curriculum objectives being assessed.